Uh, we've got a demo box in Brussels, so what we'll do is do a very quick demo of, uh, it just demonstrates the visibility you get out of Palo Alto and forms what might be considered a, a minor miracle in, in certain circles. So there's a box in Brussels, we connect to it, it's basically traffic runs through it all the time, um, and it's a PCAP that we got, so it's, a, it's a, basically a network recording that we endlessly replay through the firewall, and it gives you a clue as to what a, a really real firewall would look like in production. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to data mine the firewall using this thing called the Application Command Center, it's the ACC, and it's going to present the top 25 sessions going through the firewall in the last hour. So it's going to show me all the applications, top 25 applications seen in the last hour, uh, web browsing, DNS, NTP, FTP, all that sort of stuff. Um, it's also seeing there uh, stuff like Yahoo Mail, Microsoft updates, uh, Google Analytics is up there, and also you've got things like insufficient information, or no new things. That's the firewall basically saying, oh, I don't understand. Um, you know, can you add this application? Can you tell me what this is? What should I be doing with it? Each application is a risk rating. So each application is this number. It's just a number. Um, all the number says is, guess what, web browsing. Uh, due to the fact you know, there's problems associated with web browsers, there's time wasting, there's malware, there's bandwidth usage. Web browsing is far more risky um, than ping. That's it. It's just a number. That number is aggregated into this number up here. So the 3.8 there, I uh, just aggregate those figures there, and that's just a number. If you go into the office every day and your Palo Alto says 3.8, 3.7, 3.9, then it's business usual, nothing to worry about. If it spikes up to 5, which is the top end of the scale, then hey, guess what? You've got a problem. If it spikes down to zero, you're probably unemployed uh, as a network instead. And that's really, really all it's useful for. So you get the applications, you get some URL filtering. Um, like I said, we have a, a URL categorization database on the firewall. And it's just looking at HTTP headers for the sessions going, all right, guess what? That website, that application was web-based email. It was uh, social networking. It was education institutions. Um, it's just calling out the, the categories. We then got threat information. So this is, you know, spyware, modern malware, vulnerabilities, uh, kind of thing that an IPS would produce, your antivirus would produce. And it's just showing you the top 25 ones. You've got critical low and high ones. Uh, ranging things like login failed there. So you've got FTP failed login to you know, virtual Mumbo phone homes. That's a piece of spyware, isn't it? Uh, and you've got code execution there with Adobe. So it's different types of vulnerabilities that one will see across all ports. The, the final thing it's putting out is data filtering. So this is the firewall saying, you know, guess what? I saw Windows executable 588 times. Um, Microsoft Excel, Microsoft Word, well, it's seeing all those things. It's also pulling out keywords. So it's looking for the word teacher in this case. Um, it's also pulling out the word... <laughs> it's also pulling out the word confidential, and it's also pulling out credit card filters as well. So. That's, that's that side of things. Now, what you can do with this is you can pick on them. So I'm going to pick on BitTorrent. Maybe you've got an organization, this is your firewall, and your, your Palo Alto is telling you that, oh, guess what, I saw, I saw BitTorrent. Um, now, I could have picked on a thread, I could have picked on a virus, I could have picked on a URL category or anything, it's all like that. I'm just going to investigate in this instance in BitTorrent. It tells me what BitTorrent is, which is fine. It tells me what ports it run over, and this is why Historically, traditional IPS and typical firewalls have struggled um, with controlling BitTorrent and on Skype, on LimeWire, that sort of stuff. It's because there is no port number associated with it. A uh, port-dependent firewall can't control this. It tells you why it's got such a high risk rating, it's capable of transfer files, malware, evasive, so on and so forth. And you can click on the Google or Wikipedia page to get some more information. What I've then got is top application is BitTorrent, and that's because I clicked on BitTorrent, so I just went to columns there. What I then get is some host name information, some IP address information. I'm also getting user information and a number of bytes. So even looking at that, I can see that Tim Dyke, this fellow here, is the, the most prolific user of BitTorrent. Um, and he's acting as a source. So he's, a, he, he's the ones initiating BitTorrent sessions of people downloading stuff like this. Um, you then got the top destinations. These are people receiving BitTorrent sessions. And again, I've got IP addresses, usernames. I've got a nice good graph that once again highlights Tim Dyke as a, as a sort of problem user when it comes to BitTorrent. 
I can see any countries associated with it. This isn't too great. I mean, for the BitTorrent, obviously BitTorrent grabs a little bit of the file from all over the place. Um, if I clicked on a virus, this might be more information. If I had clicked on a piece of confidential data, that might have been more relevant here. You know, guess what? If you uh, if you set up a keyword search for a particular customer or a piece of particular piece of information, and you see it going to China, and you don't deal with China, and guess what? You've got a problem. But you can at least see this. You know, no other firewall allows you this level of information. If you had to go to your sort of traditional IPS, I guess, dealt with BitTorrent a little bit, firewalls dealt with IPS, you know, being able to figure out which user has got the most in what has been a little over two clicks is kind of a minor miracle. Um, I can pick on a user, so if I pick on this user here, it puts the, uh, the username of this filter here in the top left. It changes the, the port to reflect that this is all the stuff that uh, Mediproti, the user I picked on, Mediproti has been using BitTorrent. Ah, that may not, may not be interesting. Maybe I've clicked on a zip file. Maybe I clicked on the Now I would know how many, how many zip files he sent out, that sort of stuff. Um, in this case, BitTorrent is not too interesting. But if I remove BitTorrent from the filter, I can immediately then start to see uh, you know, everything that this particular user has done in the last hour. I might say to myself, oh, just a minute. I, I don't allow Hotmail. And I can then start perhaps investigating Hotmail. I can, you know, within five clicks, I've identified that you know, BitTorrent is a problem user. I've then found out that there's another application on the network I'm not allowing, and I can see you know, in a couple of minutes all the people on my network that are perhaps using Hotmail. So there you go. That's kind of cute. Um, the other thing that I can do, in addition to doing this, you know, and, and keep in mind that you know to be able to figure out this, I I'd have to examine the firewall logs, maybe I'd have to examine the IPS, I'd certainly have to investigate the URL filter or the proxy logs, um, which take me more than sort of the three clicks I've gone through here. Um, I can at any point dive into the sort of traditional firewall logs and start getting you know, source port and destination and all manner of information. There's a PCAP there. So what I can do is go from you know, a 30,000 mile view of the, the network, the traffic that's actually live going through the firewall right now, um, and zoom in within a handful of moments to very detailed information. So rather than, you know, right now with a lot of technologies, firewall administrators just open up ports. You know, they get a call, they change request, they, they have to you know, allow, allow Oracle on port, whatever. Um, and there's not really much of a security function that you're just opening and closing ports. Um, with the Palo Alto stuff, what's nice is that you can be very proactive. You know, if if there was you'd gone through this and you'd noticed that a particular user from I don't know, let's pick on South Korea from the South Korean office was uploading a 600 meg AVI every Wednesday, is this legitimate? Is it not legitimate? Who knows? Who would even see it? Um, with ours, you know, that sort of activity is very very obvious very easy to investigate and very easy to then remediate. You know, I just went into an organization and they had that issue. How do people share these huge files? You know, then you can start looking at web 2.0 and saying, right, we're going to use you, send it. Get a corporate account that we're going to limit it to these particular users. They can only send these type of files and hey, they can only send it this time of day. So you know, you go from a position with traditional sort of technology where you know the amount of visibility you've got is, is limited by the reports you're getting, limited by the, the visibility, limited by the technology itself. Um, to a Palo Alto sort of place where you know what you're getting all the visibility, you're seeing all the ports, all the users, all the information, all of the time. Um, and then feeding that back proactively into the into the company. So there you for you know you're improving your company's security posture um, rather than like I say being largely with the traditional stuff slightly in the dark. And that's the point of that demo. So that's uh, I don't want to I don't want to dwell on that any any longer than I really have to. I really encourage people to get a POC. Um, it's fairly easy to get uh, hands on one of our boxes. Um, the guys at Prodec will will make sure that they facilitate that and you'll get an engineer on site. In only a couple of hours we can we can generate a report like this on, on pretty much any any network. Out there, and we can do it transparently too, so it can go uh, out of band on the network almost. So, if we're on a tap port, it just snips the traffic and 
we look at where to get a report on your network. So that's uh, that's that um, as far as demo goes. I don't want to spend too much time on it. I hope, I hope it was at least interesting. Um, just with that, I think that's that's me done. It's very difficult to, to know when you can't see people's faces. Uh, so thank you very much for listening. Uh, thank you very much indeed for the uh, for the project guys helping me out here. And with that, I'll I'll hand you back to project. Thank you very much, Will. Uh, very interesting. It's great to be able to see the, the uh, firewall in action and to be able to see how simple it is to get um, information with just a few clicks of a mouse. You can delve right into uh, a problem and have an answer to it within minutes. Um, thank you for your time, uh, everyone who's attended the uh, webinar today. And uh, we look forward to hearing from you. If there's any questions, please give us a call. Thanks a lot. Goodbye.